I like vehicles with independent suspension, which can sometimes use bump steer to resolve some handling issues. In B maxles, bump steer is always a bad thing. So, in this video, I'm going to explain what bump steer is, explain what causes it, and give you some tips for how you can get rid of it. At the end of this video, I'll give you three rules for how you can eliminate bump steer in some types of BMAX or setup. So first of all, what is bump steer? Bump steer is the uncommanded steering input that you can get as the axle moves vertically. So you imagine you're driving along the road, you're holding the steering completely straight, and as you're driving along, the axle's moving up and down, and that movement is causing the wheels to steer. Now, that's obviously a bad thing, because as you're driving along on a rough road, you're getting vertical motion of the axle, but because the wheels are steering, that can cause the vehicle to start to weave, and also makes the handling of the vehicle quite unpleasant, because you're never entirely sure where it's going to go. Before we talk about what causes bump steer, it's probably a good idea to have a look at how beam axles are conventionally steered. So there are some vehicles, for example, agricultural tractors and construction machines uh, that use hydraulic steering. So there is no mechanical connection between the hand wheel uh, and the axle, and they don't suffer from bump steer. Unfortunately, hydraulic steering isn't legal for most road vehicles. So if you've got something like an SUV, then hydraulic steering is not going to be legal to use on the road. Most beam axle vehicles have a steering joint at either end of the axle, a, a knuckle or a, a swivel, if you like. So these allow the, the wheels to steer relative to the axle tube. So I'll give you that movement. The two steering swivels are joined together by a track rod. The track rod runs across the vehicle, along the axle, ensuring that the motion of the wheels on either end of the axle are coordinated with each other. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that they move by the same amount, uh, but that's a whole nother video. But it does ensure that when your left wheel steers, then your right wheel steers in the same direction. You also have a drag link. So the drag link is a long link that runs from one of the steering, uh, one of the steering joints all the way across the vehicle to the steering box. The job of the steering box is to convert the rotary motion of the hand wheel, the steering wheel, into a roughly lateral motion at the pitman arm. So the pitman arm is the arm that hangs at the bottom of the steering box, and that pushes the drag link from side to side underneath the vehicle. The main reason that you get bump steer is because the motion of the drag link doesn't match the motion of the axle. So you imagine the axle is moving up and down, and in a lot of designs, so for example, four-link suspension, uh, or uh, leaf-sprung suspension, or suspension that uses an A-frame, the motion of the axle is completely vertical, so it's going straight up and down. The drag link, though, is moving around in an arc. So it's moving around in an arc from the pitman arm. So you've got an axle that goes, goes straight up and down, and you've got a drag link that's moving from side to side. Now that causes the, the wheels to steer as the axle's going up and down. It's that mismatch between the motion of the axle and the motion of the drag link that causes bump steer. So in some designs of suspension, four link, A-frame, uh, leaf springs, uh, some degree of bump steer is pretty much inevitable and you can't really get rid of it. There are a couple of things that you can do to minimise bump steer, even in designs where bump steer is a fundamental, uh, a fundamental problem. So the first thing to do is ensure that the drag link is as long as possible. The longer the drag link is, then the less lateral motion you're going to get as the, as, as the link goes up and down as the suspension travels. So making the arms longer, and it applies to any suspension arm actually, if you make it longer, you'll end up with less uh, lateral motion at the end of it. The other thing you should make sure is that the drag link is level with the surface. So it's, it's flat relative to the surface at normal ride height. Uh, the reason for that is that essentially as, a, as the suspension's going up and down, it's only ever oscillating around 
uh, that level position. And that also minimizes the amount of lateral motion you get as the suspension moves. There are designs though that allow you to pretty much eliminate bump steer. So if you're using a panard rod uh, for your lateral location, so to stop the axle from moving sideways as the axle is going up and down, you can design that to completely eliminate bump steer. And I'm going to show you how. You can also, with a panard rod, go horribly wrong if you, if you get a few very basic details wrong. We saw in a previous video that uh, the panard rod forces the axle to move sideways. It forces it to move laterally. Uh, and that is a fundamental property of panhard rod suspension, that the axle always moves sideways. And that sounds like a bad thing. Um, and to a certain degree it is, but it does mean that you can eliminate bump steer. So here, uh, I've added our steering system over the top of our, our axle. Uh, and you can see that in this case, the drag link uh, is running uh, from the steering box, which as we're looking at it is on the left hand side of the vehicle, across to the right hand side. And the panard rod is mounted to the, the right hand side of the chassis and running to the left hand side of the axle. This is the worst possible condition. So what's going to happen here is as the axle goes up, the panard rod will force it to the left as we're looking at it. Um, the drag link, as that goes up, is going to push out to the right. So that's going to force the wheels to steer. So the motion of the axle, due to the panard rod, is combining with the motion of the drag link, due to its angle, uh, and causing lots of steering input. So how can we eliminate this? Well, rule number one is that the drag link and the panard rod must always come from the same side of the vehicle. So you should never mount the panard rod so that it runs in the opposite direction to the drag link. So if you've got, in this case, a right-hand drive vehicle, so the driver sitting on the right-hand side, that usually means the steering box is on the right-hand side, so that means the panard rod has got a mount on the right-hand side. For a left-hand drive vehicle, you do the opposite. You run the panard rod from the left-hand side of the chassis down to the right-hand side of the axle. So, rule number one, panard rod and drag link always run from the same side of the chassis. The second thing you can do to improve the handling of your vehicle with a panard rod is to make sure that the length of the panard rod matches the length of the drag link. So the panard rod and the drag link should be the same length as one another. The third thing you should do is make sure that the panard rod and the drag link are parallel to one another. So what you don't want is for your panard rod to be flat, say, parallel to the ground, and the drag link sloping downhill, or vice versa. So if one of them slopes downhill, the other one should slope downhill with it. In the next video, we're going to look at roll steer. So roll steer is another phenomenon that affects beam axle vehicles. But unlike bump steer, isn't really associated with the steering system and can affect the front and rear axles. So, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more content on off-road vehicle engineering. Thanks for watching.